Welcome to part two of my video build for the Fairy Gannet uh, 1 to 70 second scale trumpeter kit. Um, it's been a while coming, uh, like I said in the update the other week, it's been very busy. So this is where we got to. So the, the fuselage was put together and now we're, st uh, we're starting to work on the sort of rear stabilizers and the wings and looking at filling the seams on the uh, fuselage itself. So most of the pieces um, needed to be sort of sanded down around the edges. There was a few seams that I needed to sand out. Um, and as you can see, using different grades of uh, sanders here, these are Ultimate Modeling Products sanders, um, different grades. So start off with a high grade and then work down to a low grade. And then finally, I've got a, a buffer that I use, which is blue and white uh, and gets it back to a nice uh, smooth surface. So um, again, just uh, getting everything sort of pulled together, uh, using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, uh, which is the sort of go-to glue that I use now. It's uh, very easy to use, it's very forgiving, uh, and it's, uh, it evaporates very quickly, and it leaves a, a good weld on the, on the plastic joints. So most of the uh, parts on this went together really well. Um, there was uh, no real sort of uh, fit issues, um, apart from one which you'll see in a moment. Uh, but the wings and the stabilizers actually sna almost snapped together, so it was uh, it was really good um, and really easy to deal with. Uh, just to, touching up there some of the glue there, uh, and then on the leading edge of the wings, um, just giving those a sand down because there was a very obvious seam line down the edge of the plastic, which you would expect. Um, but uh, just try to sort of sand that out just very gently, um, not pressing too hard because you don't want to get like a flat edge on the on the edge of the wing because it'll, it'll, it'll stand out, it'll be really obvious. So just very gently working around, getting rid of the seam line, uh, which should uh, sort of take away the need to put any filler along the wings because it's not something I really want to start doing. So once I'd finished with the main wings, uh, just repeat the process again, uh, this time on the stabilizers, just to make sure that you can't see the uh, the, the join. Um, even if you paint the aircraft different colors, top and bottom, which this aircraft will be, um, you can still, it, it doesn't hide the join, it's still obvious. So you need to get rid of that really. Um, if it is, but very obvious, you can use a bit of filler, but it's been, on this model, it's been okay. It's been uh, easily dealt with with the sanders. And then this section here, which is almost like the front cowling, um, needed a little bit of trimming of the uh, main fuselage just to get this to sit properly. Um, as you'll see in a moment, it didn't quite get there. Uh, still needed to do a little bit of uh, extra filling around this part. Um, like I said, the fit wasn't bad. It was just, it was, it was too obvious. There was too obvious a gap. Um, and even with trimming and things like that, it didn't quite go away. Um, so once I'd finished putting that on, I just went around the aircraft and looked for the less obvious seams and just gave those a sand down so that these parts that you see here getting sanded won't need any filler. And there were a few small parts to add on. Uh, there's some additional parts of uh, trim that need to go underneath the uh, cockpit, underneath the canopy, so just add those on now. Uh, and then there were smaller, smaller details of... Uh, uh, just below that there's a, there's a small triangular part, I'm not actually sure what it is, but kind of a hook um, and that needed going as well, so we got all that stuck down. Um, they weren't, I think the part was very very slightly warped, um, so what I've done here is I've just put on uh, plenty of the uh, Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and then just a piece of uh, Tamiya tape just to hold it down um, while it sets. So this is the uh, small triangular piece that I was mentioning just before. Uh, was quite small and fiddly, so I ended up having to use tweezers. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not even sure what the part is. So I uh, got those into position, glued them in. Um, and then what was next was the exhausts. Now these were a little bit fiddly. They do have like a guide line along the edge of them that you use to clip into a, a, like a, a male part, female part on the inside. Um, but it was actually quite fiddly though, it's at a very specific angle and as you can see there, I got that completely wrong and it just 
disappeared inside the airframe. So look, I could sort of drop that back out again. Um, but uh, that's basically what uh, was the problem there. It's, it's getting it lined up. So I didn't use glue because I didn't want it to uh, get misaligned. So once I was happy with it, it was in position like that. That's when I glued it. Okay, so the next uh, parts that we had to work on were the uh, the flaps that go underneath the wings. Uh, so obviously for dropping down for landings, takeoffs, that sort of thing. Um, now they're quite fiddly. There's two on each side, um, and they both have two of these sort of uh, attaching arms, which are very small and very very thin. So as you can see, I'm very carefully here trying to trim off the excess plastic or or flash that uh, were on these when they, they came off the sprue um, but again too, too thin to try and file so just very carefully with a sharp a new sharp blade actually I put a new blade in for this just trimming them down and uh, they both sort of clip one underneath but what I've decided to do is to leave these off until um, the aircraft's finished it basically once I've primed painted uh, decaled everything I'll probably put these on at the same time as the in the carriage um, I'm a very clumsy person, so I just know if I put these on now, um, I'll probably knock them off half a dozen times before I actually get to finish the model, and it'll just drive me nuts. So, uh, yeah, I'm leaving these off, and uh, um, I think I left them for about 24 hours once I glued them. You can see here the glue grips quite quick with the glue, um, but then I've just left it to set probably go off for like 24 hours before, before I've even tried to move them um, and yeah I'll just put those to one side and we'll use those once the uh, aircraft's finished. Here you can see uh, the, the gap on the front cowling that I mentioned earlier and you can see there's a lot of panel lines and river marks on there so I've protected those with some tape uh, and then I've added the filler, uh, left it for 24 hours um, and then I'm removing the tape as you can see here and then it didn't actually need that much sanding um, but the, the true test will be once I've primed it we'll see what sort of what sort of uh, effect we've got um, but I'm hoping that by doing this I've uh, preserved all the details um, without the need for doing a lot of rescribing. Uh, now the main part of the fuselage underneath was where the biggest and most obvious gap was um, so that's all been filled in with uh, filler and you can see here I've uh, basically gone around with uh, the signing sticks again and the one that you can see here this is the this is the buffer that I mentioned earlier it's an, uh, another ultimate modeling products uh, item it's just a double-sided buffer so the blue side is a, something like a 12,000 grade sander and the white side is the buffer uh, so once I've got everything back to smooth plastic then around the rear of the fuselage, I'm using my scribing tool just to put in a couple of the panel lines, put them back in uh, where they've got filled with filler or they've been sanded down a bit much when I've been trying to hide the main join line. So just scribing those back in, it's a Tamiya scribing tool. Incredibly sharp, you don't need to press hard, you literally just pull it along the plastic and it just makes a nice neat line for you. For bigger bigger lines and bit more and like more detailed lines I would use a, a guide or a, a marker or a, a template just to make sure I was doing a straight line but uh, yeah so once you've got that in I uh, went back to the front of the aircraft and did a couple of little bits of scribing around the filling that we've just done just around the there was a couple of obvious ones on each side so we got that tidied up and then finally it was to uh, the actual join of the fuselage together so Got the rear stabilizers on, um, got them glued in position. Very, very tight fit, so no wiggling around. It was really, really good. I was very impressed. And a lot of models have now got these uh, spars that come out of the airframe that the, the wings sit on, um, which makes these so much easier to attach. Like old fashioned models, there's no spar, you just clip the wing in, like you see here, but there's no support. It's flopping all over the place and it's a pain. Um, but these things, as you can see, I'm hardly holding that at all on the underneath um and it just st stuck in a place fine there's not much of a gap at all it's quite flush um so glued in position and uh, repeat the process on the other side which was very very slightly more flexible but again went in a position really nice and there uh, we got it all glued in 
I should say as well that I've uh, obviously dry fitted all of these parts before I've glued them into position uh, off camera. Uh, just made sure everything fitted. Uh, there was no major issues before I put the glue in and bond it all into place. And that was basically all of the work that we've done in this part of the video. So the airframes are all now together. Uh, so we're ready to move on to the next stage, which is going to be uh, priming the model uh, with uh, prime and paint model uh getting it all painted up uh, but the first job will be once the um prime is on we'll see how the filling has has worked see if there's any obvious gaps that we need to work on so i'll be looking at that and uh, the next part of the video should be up soon and it will be like i say uh the filling the painting and uh oh, the final touches to the uh probably the decor work as well so uh, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you all soon. Thanks very much. Bye now.